So, continuing the theme of the great premise-free proof, do you want to do another premise-free proof? I do. Now, this one will use a different method. Okay. okay. Well, I take a look at this. It, it is not an argument. This is, uh, but I'm going to treat it kind of like an argument without any premises. This is kind of like a conclusion to an argument. So I'm not going to use it, but I'm going to aim for it. It's my goal, my telos, if you will. And I look at this goal. It is not a conditional, so I will not use conditional proof. I will instead use indirect proof. And the way indirect proof it works, I indent to the right, as always. And then I'm going to assume the negation of my goal. Now, my goal is kind of an ugly looking thing, so it may look kind of ugly at first, but let me go ahead and do this. This is the negation of my goal. And I'm going to write AP, assume premise. Can I jump sure, in? Jump in. And this is a mistake that students often make. Uh -oh. They forget. No, he. he oh. I mean, this is perfect. But okay. the, uh, students often forget when you assume that when you do an indirect proof, you want to assume that, as Mark said, the negation of your goal. This is his goal, but it has one tilde over it. So if you have one tilde over the whole, the negation is going to be the formula that's exactly the same, except it has another tilde added. So it'll have two tildes over the whole. Because remember, the negation of P is always the same as P, but with a tilde added. So add one tilde to one tilde, you've got two tildes here. This, I don't know why, but this is a common mistake that students forget that when they form the negation, they add a tilde. Okay. Wisdom is vindicated by our children. I've never understood that claim, but I felt it was worth saying. Uh, okay, we're going to play with this thing here a bit. Those two tildes look particularly nauseating to me. I don't like them. They look ridiculous. I'm going to get rid of them using double negation. So let's just get rid of those guys right here and now. Because I want to clean this up. I want my life to be relatively simple. Double negation, one. Okay, now we've got a conjunction. I like conjunctions because I can break them down into smaller parts. I'm just going to do that in a nearly mindless fashion right now. Because I like simple things. I have a small mind. I have a simple mind. I like working with simple things. So we got simp, two. And now I'm going to pull out this part here. The right disjunct, or the right conjunct, that is. And that, again, is going to be simp, two. Now I've got smaller things to work with. I'm feeling a little bit better about life. I'm looking for a contradiction. And given I've done an indirect proof, made an assumption, I'm looking for a contradiction. It's looking like it's going to be either A and not A, B and not B. Um, maybe A and not A or B and not B. Don't know what it is yet. Uh, I can do a De Morgan's on this. And I love De Morgan's. I like doing De Morgan's. If I was to create another rule, it would be I would call it Story's Rule. And Story's Rule would be, if you see a De Morgan's, do the De Morgan's. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to write a little bit cleaner. The Morgans, four. Okay, that's looking a little bit better here. There's more than one way to do this. I can see right now I could come up with a different con a contradiction made up of A's and a contradiction made up of B's. Let's just see what happens. I'm going to pull out the tilde tilde A using simp. And I'm going to double negate it because I really don't like those two tildes. What I'm seeing here is a De Morgan's, or excuse me, a modus ponens, with the A and tilde B, a, uh, a horseshoe B. So let's get that off the ground. I'm looking for a contradiction. I'm seeing one here. So first I got to pull this out. So I get tilde B. I'm running out of room. Let me set five. I'm going to move this fine bungee cord. I need to conjoin these to actually get a contradiction. That's the way indirect proof works. Using conj, eight and nine. Okay. I'm still inside this indented sequence for the indirect proof, but I finally found a contradiction. B and tilde B, and I know that's false. The way indirect proof works is once I get a contradiction, I can pull out to the left, this other column to the left, and I get to say that my goal is true. And that's with indirect proof. 
appealing the sequence 1 through 10. And since I now have the goal, the thing I'm looking for, and I have derived it out of sheer nothingness with no premises, nothing whatsoever, it looks like this absolutely has to be true. Again, if I did a truth table under this thing, I'd have nothing but T's underneath the main operator. We've shown that if the premise, that this thing has to be true no matter what, and that's what we mean by a theorem. You want to say anything else here, Paul? Okay. Well, that is a lovely proof, by the way. Beautiful proof. And a couple comments. First of all, um, students seem to have a lot of trouble with De Morgan. It seems to be a, a rule that is often applied incorrectly. So let me just remind you uh, what Mark did. He turned the wedge to an and, he added a tilde to the b, he added a tilde to the not a to get two tilde a, a not not a, and he he removed a tilde from the whole. So, you know, De Morgan turns not p wedge q into um, not p and not q. That's one way to think of what he did. It turns it turns. Watch the finger here. <laughs> turns not p wedge q into just not p and not q. But De Morgan's so it's so easy to make a mistake with De Morgan. Be really careful when you do De Morgan. Another mistake that's common on do you tell me if you think find this to be a common error is you you have to end your indentation on a contradiction. You have to derive a contradiction. A contradiction is a statement of the form P and not P. I find sometimes people will see this and they'll see this. And, and they'll they, stop. They're satisfied with that and come yeah, out. Yeah. Technically, this is not a contradiction and that's not a contradiction. Right. The contradiction is when you put them together and see they're both true. And that's why we have by line conjunction. 10. Yeah, by conjunction. Yes. And, and by the way, that's conjunction, not addition. Right. But the addition uses a wedge. Just remember that. But anyway, I, he, he reached, Mark reached a contradiction. A, a statement of the form P ampersand not P has to be in that order, has to be of that form. So A and not A, B and not B, C ampersand not C, anything that's a contradiction. That's what's required before you end, disindent, and assert the same thing that you started with minus one of its tildes. The goal. In other words, I like that, the goal or the telos, to use an ancient Greek term for the goal. <coughs> so that's a beautiful proof. Yeah. And that's it.